Rajan um, and Miriam. Uh, wonderful to meet with you again today and discuss what was initiated at our first meeting when you gave me your card which explained the Pomegranate Institute and the philosophy around that. That triggered in me the thought of seed and harvest and of sowing and reaping. And this is an archetypal story that has been known for millennia and is continuing to grow as we as individuals adhere to that concept of sowing and reaping. That what is really important is that the thing that you look for in life is the opportunity. What is that opportunity? In my mind, that opportunity is like seed. And if you're fortunate to get to a place in time and in your life where you don't need more food, your challenge becomes to go after the seed that is found in the fruit. And an incredible truth about fruit is when it's mature, it's most ready to be eaten. When the caloric value of that fruit is at its maximum, it is at that time that the seed is ready to be extracted from the fruit, to be separated in from the fruit and to start another cycle. That seed is then ready to go into the ground, dwell in the ground, and slowly emerge. And it emerges initially as a vulnerable, fragile little plant that needs a lot of care. Just like a human baby needs a lot of care for 12, 24, 36 months, that seed grows up and eventually becomes a tree. And what does that tree do? It produces fruit. And from that tree does not only come one fruit, although there was only one seed. That's the concept of multiplication. And it's because of this that I take extremely serious every little encounter with anybody, because that could be a critical encounter. That that seed has within it the opportunity to create thousands of seeds. The beauty of this is that that tree does something that the seed on its own cannot do. Seed needs to grow, needs to develop into a tree. And what does the tree do? The tree becomes part of an entire system that captures chemical energy, light energy from the sun and traps it in its leaves and it converts that light energy into chemical energy and that becomes the life in the, seed, in the fruit. It is that life that helps that seed and the message that that seed contains, its DNA, to reproduce itself again and again and again. But what the tree does is amazing as it traps the energy from the sun. It also releases things into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide again with the sun generates rain. And suddenly you have all of the ingredients necessary for growth and for life. This is the incredible beauty of seed and harvest. And this is not only with money, it's more important in the little things of life. What do you sow today? Do you sow kindness, caring, compassion, and interest? Because if you do, the reap of the harvest that is reaped, which you may not be part of, you may not enjoy the fruit that comes from the seed that you sow, because it takes time. Life takes time. It takes time for things to happen, for things to grow. But when you have confidence that you put your head on your pillow at night knowing that you've sown a few seeds, that you know that at some time, somewhere, someone will either benefit from the fruit of that seed or benefit from the opportunity to have more seed themselves. So that is this essence is the concept that we discussed, Maria. Anything else that you recall that I could maybe emphasize. From your life experience and from your upbringing, mm. what do you take it that, where does this philosophy come from in your life? How do you source such beautifully constructed mm. phrases? Do they source from, is it your experience, your upbringing? Mm. Where does this come from? Well, it's, I'm sure you understand the word plagiarism. That is to steal other men's ideas, right? The reality is all of us stand on the shoulders of giants that have gone before we have. And I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm a fascinated student of life and history. And I've, I've read vociferously, I read 
continuously because I want to grapple with the meaning of life and the value of life. And as, I, as I've done that, as I've looked into the stories of great men and women that have gone before, the same archetypal stories emerge. They were grappling with the same issues that we are. This is part of evolution, I'm not an evolutionist, but part of the species growing to be all that it could be, all that it can be. And essentially for me, it's been of curiosity. I am fascinated by life. I am extremely fortunate to be exposed to a lot of people's narratives and their stories in my day-to-day -day life with my patients. And these things stimulate me and I, I go home and I write about them and I capture them and I think about them. And, and I really work hard to capture these thoughts with words so that I understand the words because I want to strongly express who I am, why I am, why I do what I do, which is essentially caring for people. And, and so that's where it comes from. It's a personal journey of pursuit, of understanding, and, and a desire to make a difference, a desire to, to, to know that this morning I shared with you, Miriam, that a very close friend of mine died after nine years of cancer. And we were born in the same year, and we know from research that the year in which you were born will have a significant impact on the outcome of your life. If you were born in 1980 in Syria, by the time of the revolution in when you're 25, you were, your whole life would be framed by that incident. But if you were born in Syria in 1900, you were born at a time of extreme growth and excitement, etc., etc. And what I think of this morning as I recall my friends passing today, the class of 61. We are the class of 61. We occupy a space in time. His space ended today in 2019. That will be his history. And as we look at how history framed his life and how his life framed history, that becomes the pursuit to carry on right, to make every encounter count. Because you don't know which seed leads to the forest. Right? You don't know who comes after you that will harvest fruit. And maybe with more insight and more skill, do with that fruit what you never imagined possible that seed could do. And that's the continuum of life. We speak in healthcare of the continuum of care, which starts when you meet the patient and doesn't end until you no longer see the patient. That's how I see it. And so that's the origin of my of mine, you know, the, the thoughts is that we all have a story and we are all busy writing that story. And the beautiful part of it for me is how closely linked our stories are. You spoke of the Pomegranate Institute and the concept of seed and harvest. For me, I have other focus on fruit, right, and on seed. But that's just the reality of life. As each of us stumbles through life and the uncertainty of life, and, and the chaos of life sometimes, that these stories help us find direction. They help us find meaning and purpose when things around us look chaotic. And uh, I might add that I would say the most precious seed that any of us is given is love, is the ability to love others unconditionally. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about that and I've I have a word that means is important to me. It doesn't exist in the dictionary. It's called unconditionality. And it reflects to me the status of my relationship with others. It's a pursuit to try, it's hard, to love people regardless of their behavior. And uh, it's a challenge, but it's a pursuit. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I must say, I met you last time. I was extremely humbled, impressed, and I also consider myself uh, very fortunate that I met you. You have certainly left your seeds of passion and life in my heart and soul. Wow. And I have shared the experience of meeting you with the team mm. and the beautiful things that uh, you chose to share with me, which were for me very enriching. Um, mm. You bring a lot of values back into a person's life when you talk to them, which are values that we hope to see on a daily basis. Uh, things that we 
uh, look for in people. And very often we say such people don't exist anymore. Sure. And you are living proof as a human, as a man, as a doctor, that you do share and you choose to share passion, love, philosophy, free knowledge with everyone around you. And one very important thing I'd like to know, people like me or anyone that you meet on a daily basis, what do you hope to leave behind in them? What is it that you'd like to see in them post-meeting you? Good. Very interesting concept and very simple. And maybe this is part of our discussion is I regard my life as a seed. Right. Like a little bush that contains a few seeds that someone can pluck off and walk away with. We talk of some, uh, some seed being like choice morsels that once you eat them, they go inside and they become part of you, right? So I regard my life as a seed, you know, but the key issue for me, at least in my professional life, I want people to walk away with two things. I want them to feel safe, that they're in good hands because trust is rare. Trust is not unconditional. Love is unconditional. Trust has to be earned. When a patient trusts you, you need to treasure that because you want to grow it, right? You want your patients to become your friends. So I want to leave behind with my patients that they are safe. And I go to great lengths with our team to ensure that. But the second and most important thing is that they feel cared for. You know, you came in for a minor procedure, but I like to think that our team treats that as a major encounter. We want you to know that we care. We take seriously that you took time to come to us. Trust us for what we did. So those are the two things I want to leave behind. It's a little bit of me, but it's not just about me, it's my team. You meet Fatima, you meet Celia, you fall in love with them. You, you, you just realize that these folks are here because that's their life, that's their passion. So I would say I want my patients to feel a safe environment and I want them to feel cared for. It has been not just magnificent but life enriching listening to you. Thank you for letting us be part of this precious life knowledge that you have. And you are a seed of knowledge and a seed of life indeed. And it's a privilege for anyone to cross ways with you and to make, I think, the best out of the few moments they get to spend with you. I hope so. And uh, May I ask you a favor, and I know they're unprepared, right, is to give Fatima a few moments and give Celia a few moments Absolutely. to comment. Uh, you know, I'm a fairly strong individual and I'm fairly resilient. Uh, life is just does that to you at the age of 58. But I realize that no one of us is an island, right? No one of us is better than all of us, right? And it's one of the joys of my life as I've grown older is to be able to create these teams and then be part of them. That after you've created them, you should vanish. <laughs> and the, the ethos of the team should emerge. And of course, your colors there, and your fingerprints there, yes. right. But the team, right? And, and, and it's a joy of life. It's one of the joys of life as you get older mm -hmm. is that you realize that what you left behind can remain even if you're not there because you don't keep it. You don't keep Absolutely. it going. Yes. Dr. Smith, one last question. Why do you believe people find it very often difficult or they consider it an obstacle to put themselves out there and to show love and care? What holds them back from going that extra mile? Critical, critical question. Uh, it's a foundational question and I don't want to sound like I have a lot of answers because I definitely have more questions than answers. But you know, for me, the answer is in the following. If you don't have self-love and self-respect, you will not expose yourself to others. If you don't trust who you are, and remember, I'm not perfect. It's not my pursuit. I make mistakes, the team will tell you. But excellence is achievable, both in the way you see yourself, the way you feel about yourself, and self-respect is like any other respect. It has to grow over time. When you say you're going to do something, do it. When you say you're not going to do something, don't do it. Because when you do and you look yourself in the mirror in the morning, you feel happy that that's who you say you are, you actually are, right? 
and then from that merges self-love. You know, I grew up in a fairly tough environment and I didn't understand love until late in life, you know. And I got to the place where I now understand I have something to offer the world. It's small, but I put it out there because I trust myself and I love myself. And I, I, I don't want that to sound like a narcissist because I run the fastest so I can jump the highest. I love myself because it's important that if I can love myself, I can love others, right? And, and that's the foundational thing. That's the bottom line. It's the sine qua non of the whole discussion is getting people to see their value and their beauty and to get them to reflect on it and to drink it in, you know, and savor it. And that's why when I, this morning when I met Mojo and I said, Hi, how are you today? I looked you in the eye, I sought out your eye. That's showing you respect, right? Showing you respect. When you get in with a little child, don't talk to him from up here, put him on your lap. Look him in the eye, let him feel your strength. Just long enough so that he can get comfortable with you and trust you, right? That comes from self-love and, and, and self-respect. And it's continually a challenge to live in that lane, right? It's, it, Life is brutal. Terrible things happen to good people, you know. Things that we don't have answers for. And often you just get to yourself at the end of the day, and you, you're just glad you survived the day, you know. But that which remains is the concept that I am precious. I am valuable. And I take that every day. And everybody has that. It's, I have not found someone without value. I found a lot of people that are unaware of their value. I find a lot of people who have buried their value. They've hidden it behind fake pretenses, between, behind trying to be things they're not. You know, if you're trying to be things you're not, you're only going to fail. But if you can just be who you are, little step by little step, like that little plant grows up. You know, initially you can stand on it and kill it, right? But if you nurture it as a young child, and, and as you, if you just take those gifts given to you, see children, love them. Wow, my kids have had such an advantage compared to where I started because I think we loved them well. But uh, that's the reason people, they hold themselves back because they're not convinced they're giving any value back to life. Do you have a final message to the world of <laughs> people planting and seeding and reaping. <laughs> well, what is no, your final except message to though? say that what we, are what we are exhibiting here, I, I'm a doer, right? I, I tell patients we can go to the operating room and we go there and we cut and then I know I have to close. I like to start and finish. It's, this, it's a passion of mine. But I don't like to talk without doing. And, and what we're doing here, what you've initiated, Miriam, uh, is what we've spoken about here today. We're not just talking about that, right? We're actually doing it, right? We're connecting. We don't know where this goes. Yeah, we really don't. To be honest, I don't even know what you're going to do with it, maybe. You know? so, so that's the beauty of this, is that you need to take a risk. You need to launch out. You need to take your hands out of your pockets and put them in the ground and plant seeds. That's what we've done this morning, and, and I wasn't looking forward to this discussion because I have great sadness in my heart today. But I know that, that responding to other people's movements brings movement into my own life. So, brilliantly done, well done, uh, thank you, and uh, thank you to you. Martin. I think um, gratitude is on our part, um, going full heartedly towards it. We want to thank you. For you're making welcome. time for us oh, you're welcome. and for sharing everything that you have said today mm -hmm. and I know that you will touch a lot of people's hearts and minds and you will mm -hmm. help them find their beautiful version of themselves. Mm -hmm. This is very Absolutely. important to us. And it's there. It is there. You know we say beauty is yeah. in the eye of the beholder, right? Absolutely. Now people think the beholder is you pursue, uh, looking at me and deciding whether I'm beautiful. The beholder there is yourself. I so regularly tell my patients, look in the mirror and go. <laughs> Isn't it?
Thanks for your time. An honor and a privilege to be here. We could go on and on, right? Absolutely. <laughs>